Hello and welcome to another episode of Salvation Today. I'm your host evangelist Chris Michelson and we've got a powerful program for you today. My good friend evangelist Bernie Moore is going to be joining us. So sit back, relax and enjoy the broadcast. Hello, my friends. Welcome to another episode of Salvation. Today, uh, I'm so excited to uh, have you guys joining us because on set with me today is a dear friend of mine, Evangelist Bernie Moore. Bernie, amen. Good to be here. It's wonderful to be with you. Yeah, thank you for joining us today. Yeah. And uh, a lot of you, maybe you don't know, but Bernie is not just a dear friend, he's an evangelist. And uh, Bernie has played an instrumental part in my life. He's one of our board members for our ministry. And yeah. uh, Bernie, it's so good to have you with us. Yeah, it's a, it's a real blessing to be here with you. It's wonderful to see what God is doing in your life and your ministry, yeah. all that's unfolding around the world. So yeah. yeah, it's an honor. Awesome, man. Awesome. Well, uh, today we just, we want to talk about Jesus. Yeah. You know, this show is all about Jesus. Amen. It's about salvation. Yes. And uh, Jesus has done an incredible work in your life, yeah. in my life. And uh, I want to talk just for a moment before we talk about what God's done in your life. I want to talk about how, you know, it's such an honor to have you on the program because, Bernie, if it wasn't for you, we probably wouldn't be where we're at today. Oh, well, and, um, thank you. You know, a lot of people, maybe you don't know, but um, one of the things was, people ask me all the time, they say, Chris, how did you get into ministry? Yeah. And Bernie Moore's story is part of that story yeah, every yeah. single time. Because I was just some little, you know, Bible school kid going yeah. to Christ for the Nations in Dallas, Texas. Sure. And just hungry to see souls saved on the yeah. streets and see people get healed on the streets. Yeah. And um, no one was inviting me to come preach in churches or anything. But you and I connected. Yeah. We had coffee. Yeah. For the first time we ever really sat down with each other and talked to each other. Yeah. And, uh, and that morning, I don't know if you remember the story. I remember very you clearly, really, yeah. You, you got a call from Daniel. You yeah. guys were talking. Yeah. Daniel Kalenda said, hey, I'm in need of a personal assistant. Yeah. And, um, and, you, and you were like, Chris, I think you'd be great for the job. That's right. Yeah. 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 And so that was how I went from Bible college to getting that job with Daniel Kalenda and yeah. Christ for All Nations, Reinhard Bonnke, yeah. uh, Reinhard's ministry, and started serving the Lord. And here we are today with our own ministry, you know, taking what we've all learned from Reinhard and sure. Daniel and Christ for All Nations and sure. now preaching the gospel all over the world. So. Yeah. Man, it's yeah, it was wonderful. It was. Uh, <laughs> I remember that 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 morning very clearly because I was at Christ for the Nations teaching. Yeah. On their uh, at their main Tuesday night uh, service. Yep. And and, and I remember uh, this young guy after the service <laughs> came running through the doors yeah. and. I got to talk to you. I got to meet you. I, I want to share my heart. And yeah. I'm a last semester Bible school student and so on and so forth. And I always loved it because when I was there years ago in Bible school, uh, I always remember when teachers and, and, and pastors and evangelists and whoever would come by mm. and, and share the story, their story, their ministry, the yeah. gospel, whatever they were talking about. There were several uh, uh, pastors or evangelists that would come through. And I always remember sitting there in the audience thinking, man, I'd really like to just spend five minutes with that guy. I'd really like to, to hear a little bit more yeah. about their ministry or even about their life. And, and I always told the Lord, if I ever had that chance, mm. I would never say no to a student yeah. because they're all there hungry for God and well, at least they should be, yeah, you know, right. <laughs> I mean, pursuing the Lord, pursuing their ministry and their visions and they have dreams of doing great things for God. Yeah. And, so I always told the Lord, if God gave me that opportunity, yeah. then I want to say uh, yes to those students, whether it was wow. one or 10. Yeah. Matter of fact, after that, uh, there was a small group of students, maybe eight or 10 of them, maybe 12 of them um, that, that called me up or messaged me, emailed me. Wow. And, uh, and whenever I'd come back, I would let them know, hey, look, 
I'll be here at such and such a time or date, and they'd come out to the church services, and wow. uh, and then I'd meet them for coffee. Yeah, I, because I wanted to make myself available. That's anyway, awesome. so for you, uh, I remember that morning, <laughs> and I knew because uh, you know evangelist Daniel Kalind is a good friend of mine, and yeah. and I knew he'd been searching for someone. Yeah. And, uh, after we had coffee, I said, I I know who who Daniel needs. Mm. Uh, I know uh, based on your testimony and your heart and your willingness to serve and mm. uh, wanting to really just go deeper in the field of evangelism, knowing yeah. that that was your calling. Um, uh, so I remember very clearly, I said, I, I know Daniel needs Chris to come <laughs> and, and join the team over at CFAN, Christ for All Nations. Yeah, which is know? different than Christ for the Nations. Christ for the Nations, yeah, yeah, no yeah, affiliation other than, you know, loving Jesus, yeah. but yeah. So, um, wow. so I remember that, yeah. yeah. And then I remember, which you may not um, always tell the audience, but I remember uh, one of the things that you said to me was that you and your precious wife, Amanda, would uh, organize teams of people, yeah. even while you were in school, yeah. to go do outreaches in the neighborhood. Yeah. And, and you said one of the things that really stuck out to me was uh, one of the outreaches that you had done or, or wanted to do. Uh, you said, man, if I could just get a little money to get some hot dogs or, or some sort of, you know, food to feed all these, because they don't have any food. And, yeah. you know, I want to, and, and if I could do that, then I know I'd, I'd have the whole neighborhood or the whole complex coming out to hear the gospel. Yeah. And I remember thinking, man, that's a guy that's hungry Amen. to see people saved. Yeah. And we so, did that, actually. You did it. Yeah. We you raised a little it. bit of money from our church. Man. And we went out to an apartment complex and we passed out flyers. We called it Party in the Party in the Park. Yeah. In the middle of the apartment complex. Yeah. We set up a tent and we've had food, free food and yeah. hot dogs and oh, soda. It's wonderful. And we gathered the people and we got up on the mic and shared testimonies, preached the gospel. People got saved. And oh, that's awesome. awesome. But yeah, that's you how see? we got started, man. That is so great. <laughs> Do not despise the day of small Amen. beginnings. Amen. And never despise your dreams. Yeah. You know, God gives you. He's the author yeah. of dreams. Yeah. And if you have a dream of doing great things for God, never give up on that's it. That's right. Pursue that thing. Amen. Uh, pray over it. Amen. Give it to the Lord. Yeah. Put it in the hands of God. Watch God do something great Amen. with it, like He's done with your yeah. life and, 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 and with Chris Michaels and Evangelistic Ministries. Can you imagine years ago, after that moment of chasing me outside that, yeah. that building, yeah. and then now, fast forward now, all that God has done with your ministry and yeah. with your life and with a man and a woman who is willing to pray the prayer of Isaiah, here I am, mm. send me. Amen. Here I am, Lord. Yeah. Whatever you want. Yeah. I just want you to know I'm available. Yeah. I may not be the most qualified. Yeah. I may not be the greatest uh, speaker or the greatest musician or the greatest worship leader yeah. or the greatest pastor, but Lord, I'm a willing vessel. Amen. Here I am. That's it. That's it, bro. That's that's literally. I think that's all God's looking for. Yeah. You know, yeah. really, he loves to take the foolish things and confound the wise. That's right. You know, he, he loves specializes. Yeah, in he that. does. He does. You know, you think about Peter and John and James. Yeah. I mean, they were fishermen. Yeah. They weren't, you know, articulate preachers. Right. They weren't like right. the, the most theologically trained. Yeah. They were just people who were willing to say uh, yes as soon as Jesus said, follow me. Yeah, And I'll make right. you fishers of men. It's funny you mention that because uh, in Acts chapter 4, uh, let me just bring this sure. up because this is so wonderful going upon uh, or going along the same lines of people just saying, here I am. Yeah. The reality is uh, Peter and John, they had just gotten arrested. Now, ironically <laughs> enough, this is so crazy. They got arrested because a paralytic man, yeah. you know, lame, the Bible says, from his mother's womb, yeah. who we come to find out later was over 40 years old. Wow. That brother was over 40 years old and yeah. never walked never a day walked. in his life. Yep. And all these religious leaders would pass him by daily mm. because they laid him right outside the gate beautiful. Yeah. Isn't it amazing? Yeah. So many people are laying in beautiful places, but they have ugly problems. Yeah. Wow. They're laying in beautiful places, but yeah. they're paralytics. They're yeah. laying, spiritually speaking. Wow. Well, here it is, Peter and John, they're going up to pray, mm -hmm. right? They see this man and they say, look, Silver and gold, I don't have. Now, everybody knows the story, but the yeah. Lord spoke something to me about this. The Lord said, um, he didn't have, or, or excuse me, they, Peter and John, they didn't have what the guy wanted, Yeah. but they had what he needed. Yeah, come on. Wow. 
You know, they yeah. didn't have what he wanted. They yeah. didn't have the lunch money yeah. or just a, a few dimes to get him through the day. Yeah. But they had what he really needed. Yeah. And he didn't even realize he needed it. And he realized, no, yeah. because he had been in the same place yeah. every single day and yeah. no one ever prayed for his yeah. healing. Yeah. No one ever prayed for that man. Yeah. They had been so accustomed to just tossing him a few quarters and going about their yeah. business. Yep. They never bothered praying for him. Yeah. Well, Peter and John, they were filled with the fire of God. Yeah. They were yeah. filled with the Holy Ghost. Yeah, they just got filled the night, That's probably right. the night before. A couple of days maybe, of days. you know. Yeah. Here it is, Acts 2, and, yeah. and now we're in Acts 3. So this yeah. is all relatively new. Right. But they had seen what Jesus had done for three years. Yeah. They had seen the miracles. Yeah. They were first hand witnesses yeah. of all the things that yeah. Jesus had done. And, and, and so what happens in John 4, they get arrested. The people are, are, are the religious leaders are so mad. Yeah. I mean, they're furious. Yeah. Ironically enough, can you believe that? The guy gets healed and they're mad. <laughs> I mean, how crazy yeah. is that? Yeah. But nevertheless, the whole town is in an uproar. Yeah. Because they are seeing, I mean, Peter and John saw 3,000 people come to Christ mm -hmm. literally a day or two prior to that. Yeah. The first time it was 5,000. Yeah. It was unbelievable. Yeah. Right? And so now the whole city's coming to Jesus. The, the religious leaders are, are losing their grip on yeah. people. And so they throw Peter and John, who they believe are the leaders of this spiritual circus, mm -hmm. right? They throw them into prison. And then they come up with this in verse 13, mm. which is so amazing. The scripture says they saw the boldness of Peter and John. Yeah. But they understood that these guys were uneducated. You just mentioned they were fishermen. Yeah. Jesus called them away from their fishing business. Yeah. They were uneducated and untrained. In other untrained, words, they yeah. hadn't been through the top-notch Bible schools of the day. They right. hadn't been through seminary classes. Yeah. You know, they, they didn't have the typical training yeah. that the religious leaders were used to seeing people, you know, that had a passion for God go through. Yeah. No, no, no. They were uneducated. They were untrained. But yet they all marveled. Yeah. Why? Because they realized one thing. The most important thing. The most important thing. They right. had been with Jesus. With Jesus, yeah. You know, you become like the person you hang out with. That's right. That's true. And here it is. Peter and John had been with Jesus. <laughs> and the anointing that was on his life got onto theirs. Yeah. And they couldn't help but everywhere they go, see people saved, yeah. healed, yeah. delivered, yeah. set free. Come on. They just wanted Jesus. That's right. They wanted to exalt him yeah. above all else. Amen. Everything in the world, yeah. they just simply wanted him yeah no agenda yeah. you know there's no secret motive That's nothing right. right matter of fact a lot of people say, oh you preachers you know this and that peter and john they had no money yeah they go to the, they had no money they didn't have any money but they had jesus yeah and they had the power <laughs> of god and that guy over 40 years of age stood up leaping the Bible says he stood up leaping and jumping and praising God. Yeah. For the first time in his life, he yeah. was able not only to walk, but to leap, and to, to jump, jump, to run, to run, to dance. Yeah. I mean, can you imagine the revival that brother had? Yeah. 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 Running and around so, the temple, the commotion, the scene that that must have yeah. made. Yeah. 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 Oh, Amazing. certainly. But that's what Je Jesus specializes in using yeah. uneducated, untrained. That's I mean, right. listen, I'm not promoting uh, people not getting an education. Yeah, that's I right. mean, I'm a huge proponent of education yeah. and, and, and going through some sort of training, some ev whether it's evangelism, pastoral, youth ministry, management, right. whatever. It, it, it always benefits a, an individual Absolutely. or individuals yes. to have some, some good training. Yeah. But the most important thing of all is Him. Yeah. Is Him. Yeah. It, it's saying, here I am. Yeah. I just want you. I just want you. And I want the world to want you. Yeah. And I don't want to just preach a message. I want the message to ooze yeah. out of my life. You want to become want, the message. I want to become the message. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. I want to become the message. And I want the power of God to ooze out of me. Yeah. Because I don't want to leave this church service Amen. or my friend's house yeah. or Bible school or whatever the same way I came. Come on. I want people to leave differently. Yeah. I want them to leave filled with his yeah. love and his life. Amen. And if they came in sick, I want them to leave healed. Amen. You know, Amen. if they came in blind, I want them to see. Oh, that people don't. God doesn't do miracles anymore. Yeah. No, no. If you really believe God does not perform miracles anymore, you need to get on a plane and come with me yeah. to Africa yeah. or India yeah. or with you to Pakistan yeah. or Asia, whatever. God is up to uh, not only saving the world, yeah. but healing Amen. the world as well. Amen. Because we need, we don't just need healing 
spiritually, yeah. but we need healing physically. That's right. It, and it all, it all yeah. came in part, as part of the curse. Yeah. Sickness, disease, and the need for salvation yeah. was all there from the beginning. We, we need Jesus. We need a Savior. And He is the one who can save us from everything. Not just He's, our salvation, but He yeah. can save us from our problems, our pit, yes. our struggles, yes. our depression that people yes. are going through, sickness that people are going through. He came to save us from everything. He did. You know, it's one thing because when someone gets healed, it's a hallmark um, picture that Jesus was on the scene. Yeah. I mean, it it is the greatest evidence yeah. that Jesus was on the scene, the greatest physician of all time. <laughs> he was right here on the scene. Come on. And all he needed to do was touch that man. Yeah. But he never works alone. He works through us. He works through uh, his crea- his That's sons right. and daughters. That's right. So he can't perform a miracle if he doesn't have a willing vessel to yeah. use. Yeah. Right? So he needs you. Yeah. You know, when I got into ministry, bro, I was I I was working construction. Mm-hmm. I was yeah. not educated. Yeah, sure. You know, I dropped out of college because I was doing drugs and yeah. I wasn't following God. Oh, man. Then God radically saved me a few years after that. Was working construction. Mm-hmm. I got radically born again. And all I wanted was to serve Jesus. Yeah. I never thought I'd be a preacher. Yeah. I never thought God would use me in that way. I just wanted to be used. So I started ushering at the ministry that we were a part sure. of. You know, seating people. Sure. Like, and I was so excited. Yeah. To just be serving yeah. Jesus in that capacity, yeah. and I never would have imagined God would take me in and use us in the way that we're being used today. And I think God is just looking for people who would say, "Lord, send me. Yeah, use me. Mm-hmm. I'll go where you want me to go. I'll do yeah. whatever you want me to do." Yeah, that's right. That's right. That's right. That's what God wants, and that's what God longs for. And God yeah. can use anybody at any point in time as yeah. long as. Your heart stays pliable and Amen. teachable before the Lord. Yeah, I mean, I remember as well. Um, there was, it was a, a, a time where when I first got saved, I I would do anything. Yeah, uh, Pastor, you want your car washed? I, yeah. Okay. Yeah. I wanted to serve. I yeah. wanted to do whatever. And so they came to me and they said, um, Hey, we're having uh, some extended meetings, some revival meetings at our church, um, and we're short parking lot crew. <laughs> I said parking lot crew, like you know, you want? Okay. All right, so it got so bad they wouldn't even put me in the church parking lot. <laughs> I had to go a block down where the hotel the was. Overflow. Yeah, and the overflow. <laughs> and then, here's your radio. You know, yeah. let us know if you need help. Yeah. Uh, yes, sir. You know. Yeah. And night after night after night, come on. There I was in the parking lot, just right this way, right. You know. Yeah. You didn't even and get I to remember, be a part of the revival. No, I didn't even. Do, I didn't even <laughs> step foot in the church. And 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 I remember, I remember that night saying, Lord, man. I mean, does does anybody see me? Yeah. I mean, like you know, you have your pitiful. I was 18 years old yeah. at the time, and I felt like the Lord said to me, "I see you." Wow. I see you. Yeah. And this is all part of the training that I'm putting you in. Yeah. Is before I even went to Bible school. Yeah. This is all part of the testimony that I'm building yeah. because you're willing to say yes. Come on. You see, I, I think a lot of people forget the aspect of just serving. Just ser- I just want to serve. Yeah. You know, whatever it is, when I was uh, years ago at Christ for All Nations and, and, and serving Evangelist Bonky, I thought it was the greatest thing in the world. Yeah. I just want to serve. Yeah. But deep in my heart, yeah, I had these grand uh, dreams and visions. I yeah. knew that I knew the Lord was calling me to. Amen. And I knew that God was going to open up the door. But I told the Lord, I won't go anywhere. Mm. Unless he, Pastor Bonke, I remember at a yep. crusade, I'm sitting talking to the Lord on the stage. Unless he blesses me, unless he sends me out. I won't go anywhere unless he sends me out. Wow. And sure enough, you know, uh, just over a year and three or four months later, miraculously that happened. Yeah. You got that job. Yeah. You got the job with CFAN and then yeah. Reinhardt said, yeah. it's time. It's time. It's time. Yeah, I was there for three years, yeah. just over three years. And, uh, and, and, and it was uh, a moment that um, I'll never forget, Come on. you know, because I was weeping like a baby. Yeah. You know, like, man, because God sees. Yeah. And God, he, he, he the Lord, in Exodus 3, uh, the Lord comes to Moses and he said, I've heard their prayers. Mm-hmm. I've seen their affliction mm-hmm. and I've come down mm-hmm. 
yeah. to deliver them. Come on. However, I can't do it alone. I need you. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And the reality is the Lord spoke to me and said, I always hear your prayers. Matter of fact, I hear the prayers of all my children. Yeah. Sometimes we think, man, I've been praying for this for, you know, two weeks. Really? Yeah. The children of Israel have been praying for 400 <laughs> years, 400 you know? Years, I yeah. mean, it was. So, but, but, but the Lord, he moves on his time. Yeah. You know, in the Old Testament, there's this phrase, at the appointed time. At the appointed all time. The, I mean, it's all laced through the Old Testament. Yeah. And, and the reality is, a lot of times, uh, like, like God told Isaiah, my time's not yours. Yeah. My thoughts are not your thoughts. Yeah. Like, I understand and I hear your prayers, mm -hmm. but there's a moment that's just right in the kingdom that at that moment, he'll elevate you. He'll move you on. Yeah. He'll promote you. Yeah. Just ask Joseph. That's right. You know? Yeah. So a lot of times um, we get a little maybe discouraged because we don't see the Lord moving uh, as quickly as we want him to. Yeah. Um, because it's part of the society in which we live. Yeah. You know, you want a burger, you go downstairs and get something or, you know, get in your car, drive five minutes down the road. You need your dry cleaning done. You need whatever you need is at, the, is at our fingertips. Yeah. But God doesn't work that way. That's right. God will keep us pursuing him. Amen. He'll keep us chasing him. Yeah. He'll keep us hungry for him. Yeah. And I, I remember the Lord just said to me, um, I've heard your prayers. Mm -hmm. I've seen your cries. And this year, 2009, I'm coming to send you to the nations. Amen. Amen. Yeah. You know, Bernie, I can't help but think that you were talking about the appointed time. Yeah. That maybe there's somebody out there right now and it's their appointed time. Sure. Maybe it's not. Maybe there's somebody out there and their appointed time is now to receive Jesus yeah. as their Lord and Savior. Maybe they're not saved yet. Yeah. And I wonder if you could just take like the next minute, minute and a half, sure, and lead that person mm. to that appointed time right now, yeah. and pray with them to receive salvation. Yeah. If you're at a, if you're in the valley of decision, uh, I don't know where you are in life. I don't know what's happened. I don't know what's taken place, uh, but I do know this. There is a loving Father in heaven mm. with His arms stretched wide open, waiting yeah. for you, anticipating, ready for you to come home. And all He is asking is for you to simply open up your heart and invite Him in to be the Lord of your life, your best mm. friend, your confidant, your lover, your everything. He wants to be Savior of your life. Amen. So wherever you are, no matter what's going on in your life, maybe everything's going great. It doesn't matter, but there's a void. There's an emptiness. He wants to fill it. Amen. Repeat this prayer after me. Dear Jesus, Dear Jesus. I ask you right now you. to come into my life. I repent of my sins. Come in and be Lord of my life. Save me. Set me free. Do a work that only you can do from this moment forward. I give you my life. I'll never be the same again. By your grace and your mercy, I will serve you all the days of my life. In Jesus' wonderful name I pray. Jesus. Amen. 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 My friends, if you prayed that prayer with Bernie, I want you to contact us and let us know that you made that decision to follow Jesus with all of your heart. Let us know. There's contact information there. You can reach out to us at info at chrismichelson.com and let us know. And uh, we're going to take a quick break, but right after this, Bernie and I are going to come back and pray for your prayer requests. And Jesus is going to do miracles in Jesus' name. Make sure you send in your prayer requests to info at chrismichelson.com. We'll be right back after this break and we'll pray for your prayer requests. We'll be right back. Evangelist Chris Michelson is preaching the gospel in some of the most unreached and challenging countries around the world. Just last year, their ministry saw 124,417 people come to faith in Christ near the Middle East and in the face of great danger. Yet God has given Evangelist Michelson and his team divine strategy and divine protection to see such a great harvest. Now you can partner with the ministry of Evangelist Chris Michelson and help them reach one million people for Jesus Christ this year near the Middle East. The challenges in this part of the world are great, but as we change one heart at a time, by sharing the gospel, God begins to change a nation. And then, 
the entire world for His glory. Your monthly partnership of any amount will go directly into seeing thousands and even millions of people near the Middle East come to faith in Jesus Christ. Together with evangelist Chris Michelson and his team, you can change the world by bringing the gospel to the most unreached nations on the planet. All gifts are tax deductible and go directly to the soul winning nonprofit ministry of Chris Michelson Evangelistic Ministries. To become a monthly ministry partner, use the information on your screen to partner today. Your partnership in the harvest is needed now more than ever to see the nation saved. Welcome back, my friends. And, uh, you know, it's just been a pleasure having Evangelist Bernie Moore with us today. And, you know, we believe in healing. Yes. We've seen miracles. You've seen them. Yes. We've seen them in our meetings. Yeah. We've seen people get healed even right here on the show, Bernie. Amen. And, Amen. Um, and we've got these prayer requests. People have been sending them in. Yeah. And we're going to pray. We'll lay hands on them. Wow. And just pray for miracles to begin yes, to happen in people's yes, lives yeah and uh, if you need a miracle maybe you even haven't sent in your prayer request yet just close your eyes lift your hands to heaven and uh let's pray let's take the next minute here and really pray yeah. for their prayer requests uh, why don't you lead us bernie amen lord we just thank you we come yeah. be on behalf of all of our friends here that have been sending in their yeah. prayer requests lord and we just pray a divine Gosh. touch upon their lives let every single person yes. right now in the mighty name of Jesus yes. from all over the world that have sent their prayer requests yes. and let them feel and experience a touch from heaven, yes, the Lord. touch of the Holy Spirit, Amen. Lord. We pray against every sickness and disease, mm -hmm. every infirmity. In the mighty name of Jesus, yes. everything that everyone has written down, Lord, yes. we pray right now that you would heal them, heal deliver Jesus. them. And Father, we pray that their families and their loved ones, yes. friends and neighbors, coworkers, whoever they are, yes. we pray that they also experience a touch from God. Yes. We come against all sickness and all disease in Jesus' mighty name. And we speak healing right now. Yes. Amen. 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 My friends, Thank you, right Lord. now, just take a moment. Test your bodies in the name of Jesus. Do yes. something you couldn't do before. If you couldn't walk, stand up and walk and see that the Lord has healed you in Jesus' name. Well, my friends, that's all the time we have for today. We love you. God bless you. Bernie, thank you for being with yes, us. Yes, thanks for having me. Yeah, and uh, we'll see you again next time on Salvation Today. Bye-bye. This program has been made possible by the friends and financial partners of Chris Michelson Evangelistic Ministries. To learn more about Chris Michelson Evangelistic Ministries, go to our website at chrismichelson.com or write to us at P.O. Box 771102, Orlando, Florida 32877. You can email us your prayer requests by sending them to info at chrismichelson.com. And don't forget to like us on Facebook at facebook.com forward slash evangelist Chris Michelson.